In this tenth and final video of the organic chemistry uh, video series, we will be covering esters, uh, nomenclature of esters, identification of esters, and some basic reactions that are associated with esters. Now in an ester, the uh, hydrogen that is in the carboxyl group is going to be replaced with an alkyl group. And so our uh, functional group for an ester is going to be a carbon that is going to be double bonded to an oxygen, attached to an oxygen, and then this oxygen, which would normally have the hydrogen, will have a carbon chain continuing out. And so we'll see a carbon chain in this direction and a carbon chain in this direction. And when we look at the esters, esters give flowers and fruit their pleasant fragrance and flavors. And so when we have an ester of a carboxylic acid, if we remember a few videos back, carboxylic acids have those very strong pungent odors. Well, the esters of the carboxylic acid have the opposite. They tend to have very uh, pleasant, fruity, or floral scents to them. With that said, esters are widespread in nature and are widely used in industry. Uh, esters are responsible for the aroma of many of the fruits, including apples, pears, bananas, pineapples, strawberries, just to name a few. Uh, they are also uh, known for be having a very pleasant a fruity odor and so they are extensively used in fragrances and flavor industries so shampoos, uh, perfumes, detergents, um, any kind of, of uh, commercial product that has some kind of flower or, or fruity scent if you check the labels it will have an ester uh, in its ingredients. When naming esters an ester is composed of an alcohol part and a carboxylic part. And so the alcohol part will be named first and the carboxylic acid part will be named second. And the way you identify these components is the carbon uh, that is double bonded to the oxygen will be the carboxylic acid portion and the carbon that is single bonded to the oxygen will be the alcohol part. And so uh, an easy way to remember this is named the single bond part first, the double bond part second. And so here we have a, um, an ester drawn out. And unfortunately, my PowerPoint does not allow me to do double bonds. So these boxes are showing that double bond attached to the oxygen. And what that means is this section right here is the acid portion. And this portion over here is going to be the alcohol portion. We will name the alcohol portion first, acid second. Remember, single bond first, double bond second. And so the way we will do this is we will name this chain with a YL ending. And so we count, and there's one carbon, so we call this methyl. And then we name this chain here, and we do include this carbon. So we have one, two carbons, that's the prefix eth. Now we would name that ethane. We're going to drop the E and add an OATE ending. And so we would call this methyl ethanate. Just going over a few additional examples before we move on. Now on this one right here, and if you need to draw it out showing the bonds, that's fine. But this carbon would be double bonded to this oxygen there, and then this carbon would be single bonded to this oxygen here. So we do the single bond portion first, and that's one, two, so we call that ethyl. And then we have this carbon double bonded. There are no other carbons, so it's a one carbon area. And we have that OATE ending. So that's a methanate. Our name for that chemical would be ethyl methanate. Here, when we look at uh, this example, and this is for the scent of pineapple, this was raspberry. For this one, we know that this carbon is going to be double bonded to the oxygen here, single bonded here. So we're going to do this single bond first, and we have one, two, so we know that's an ethyl. We need to now name this chain, and that's one, two, three, four. 
We're going to drop the E, add O-A-T-E, so that would have been butane. That makes this butanate. The name would be ethyl butanate. Here we have the structure for the ester responsible for the flavors and odors of pears. Now notice that my boxes are here and they're representing my double bond oxygen. So carbon's double bonded to an oxygen, single bonded to this oxygen. And what I would like for you to do is to try to name this chemical. Uh, see if you can name this ester correctly and the answer will be on the next slide. So hit pause, solve this, and then check your answer on the next slide. Hit pause. Well, let's see if you got the answer correct. The uh, double bond oxygens here, that's the carboxyl. Single bond here is the alcohol. We had a three carbon chain, so we had propyl. We had two carbon here, that would be, make that an ethanate. So hopefully you got propyl ethanate as the um, IUPAC name for this particular ester. So sometimes um, we are asked to uh, name an ester and other times we are asked to draw the structure of a chemical compound of an ester. And so here I have two examples for you to practice with. 3-bromobutanoic acid and um, ethyl propanate. And we're going to have you hit pause, see if you can draw these out. Answers are going to be on the next slide, so good luck. Well, hopefully you got the correct answer. Now this one was a little bit of a trick because this was on a previous video for carboxylic acids. But carboxylic acids and esters are, are tied very closely together. Uh, an alcohol plus a carboxylic acid makes an ester. And then here we have the ethyl uh, propanate. And we've got that double bond. Now this right here is more of a common name. Uh, the IUPAC name for this would be ethyl propanate. Now there are lots of different chemical reactions with organic chemistry and there's a lot of different reactions for esters. However, I do want to mention two significant chemical reactions that are associated with esters. The first is called a saponification reaction. And a saponification reaction is the reaction that an ester goes through in order to make soap. And so if you've heard of lysope, that is a saponification reaction that was uh, undergone in order to reach that end product. And so with a saponification uh, reaction, we have a free fatty acid, and we can use that for any kind of fat. Um, in my lab, I can use vegetable oil or Crisco, but notice the uh, formula for that fatty acid. That's an ester. And then we're going to uh, mix that with a base. Now notice that base has OH. That right there is an alcohol. And so we have that ester plus that hydroxyl alcohol. And then we're going to end up with a salt. And that salt is our soap. And then we'll have an alcohol that's formed. Now water would be classified as an alcohol because it's written as HOH, where we have both our uh, cation and our anion present. The cation being the H with a plus one, the anion being the OH with that negative one. And so this is an example of a saponification reaction where we have our fatty acid, which is our ester. We'll have our base, which is a hydroxyl group. Um, it, uh, potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide. Uh, we mix that together. We will make our salt, which is our soap, and then we'll make our alcohol, which is our water. The other significant reaction associated with esters that needs to be uh, mentioned is an esterification reaction. And an esterification reaction is a reaction in which an alcohol plus a carboxylic acid react together to form an ester. And so when we look at our alcohol, now here we have an alcohol, and we know that it's an alcohol because of that OH. And here we have our carboxylic acid, C double bond O, OH. And this is going to react, and it's going to make uh, an ester. And when we look at that reaction, what we have is on our... Um, carboxylic acid, notice that that OH right there breaks off. And so 
right here. This is going to break off. And then notice on our alcohol, just this hydrogen by itself breaks off. So right there. And when we get that H and that OH, that makes water. And then once these have broken off, that leaves this carbon and this oxygen right here that need to bond. And so you'll notice that they come in and bond. And I love that picture right here because it's color coded. And so you can see here where this hydrogen has broken off and where this hydroxide has broken off. And this oxygen right here needs to bond. And it's going to bond right over to this carbon. And we're going to result in an ester. And this ester, depending on what ester is formed, will have some kind of fruity fragrance associated with it. This video, number 10, is the uh, last video in my series of organic chemistry. And I hope that you have not been overwhelmed with uh, the chemistry, but it's empowered you. Um, we have just scratched the surface, but hopefully this gives you a foundation for moving forward with organic chemistry. As always, if you need additional help or have any questions, you can visit my website at koenscience.com and send me a, a message if you need help, or you can come by my classroom for help. Um, as always, it's been a pleasure.